Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part 12 of the series. And in this one, we're going to complete our data schema. And the way that we're going to do that is by implementing our list type, which is fairly straightforward. It's similar to how we did the other one. Just before we get on to doing that, though, I just want to have another quick look at privacy rules. So here we've got some scripture. And we've got the rule that says, the admin rule, where to make sure that the only subscription records that you see are the ones that are the current user subscription. And in this case, also that the admins contain the current user. And then we've got one there. However, the subscription table is sort of really for you as the publisher and developer of the app. You want to build your own separate dashboard that reads off that data so that you can get a list of your customers, see the status of them, all of that type of thing which is part of the app, but it's not part of the app that the user will, see, that your end customer will see. So at the minute, there's nothing in there that says it for you to get at it. Okay, so the way that I would normally deal with that is simply to have another field on the user. So I'm going to do it on our schema, which is a proper way to do it, of course. And we're just going to add another field. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this SAS admin okay now you can call it whatever that you like SAS admin is it a, it's going to be a yes or a no okay so for your own user account when you're logging into your dashboard to the app to the set to the side of the app that's your SAS app dashboard for you that field will be yes so let's create that then on our user data type and we'll create this field SAS admin yes or no and it's really really important that you set a default value of no to make sure any user from an end customer that signs in doesn't get access as a SaaS admin and obviously as the admin you wouldn't have a subscription in the subscription field so when our privacy rules go to subscription and we'll add a new rule I'll just change this to say uh, SaaS user admin rule and i'll change this to sas admin rule okay so this is for you so what we need to do then is we don't need any of this because obviously you, you need to have access to all of the subscription data regardless of who's using it because you you want to see that information as the the publisher and the admin of the whole app for all of your customers so what we can do then with that is to just check on that field that we've just done. So uh, current user, SAS admin is yes. And we could put another one just to make sure, which is the current user's subscription is empty. Okay. And then you get full access to all of that. So you will create yourself a user account which has an empty subscription because you don't belong to a particular subscription and you will have a SAS admin set to yes. And that way you'll get the data regardless of any other rules that, that happen to be in there that represent your actual end customer. So for this rule, which is on the subscription, this is our SAS user rule. We added this last time. And this subscription's current user subscription and this subscription's admin contains the current user. So in other words, there's, there's sort of a limit to what a user can see based on whether they're an admin for the subscription, okay? And we also need to apply that on the user because maybe the admins can see everything about a user or can see certain details that perhaps the average user who is just a member of that subscription can see. So in the same way we've done here where if it's the, if it's the user's own account, they can see everything, but if, it's, if they're just another member of the same subscription a different user but a user within the same subscription and obviously then we can sort of say well yes they need to get at this and then uh, well they don't need to get at that they need to get at the last name and the uh and the first name etc and the email maybe etc so but also maybe that we want another rule to say that if this user is a admin for the subscription we want them to be able to get it more information than perhaps the other users can Okay, so to do that, we'll apply another rule and we will call this the SAS admin rule. Okay, and we can 
use the same rule here to make sure that they are definitely a member of the same subscription. That's certainly important. So what we can do there is to say and, and we can say the current user subscription. And remember that because we've got through this condition where this user subscription is the current user subscription, we know that the the user that we're on has the same subscription as a current user, so that that condition will, will, will get met in terms of it. We know we're dealing with, this, with the right subscription. And then we can say admins, and then we can say contains the current user. So in other words, make sure it's the same subscription, and also make sure that the current user is an admin for the subscription. Okay, and then we can then apply different rules on here. So we can say, yeah, because they're the admin, they can see this and they can see this and this and this and so on and so forth. Okay, and that just enables you to have much more control or let the, the user have more control or be able to see more information if they are actually an admin for the account. Just a little note there, by the way, is that this is quite a neat little trick that we used here. If I would have said, under current user, if I would have said this user instead, and said subscriptions, admins, contains. Look what happens here is that Bubble gives us this. Rules that use this user's X's, Z, X's, Y can't grant search access right now. So if we try to do this user's subscriptions, admins, contains the current users, the current user, that would not have worked, okay? So we had to refer to the current user's subscriptions, admins, contains, the current user but because this as i said before because this one got met otherwise we wouldn't have even got to this one we know that we're dealing with the right subscription anyway so now we're going to implement our list or our satellite type here which is mainly a series of text fields which is how we want it to be so we've got a business entity a name a type and a subscription and org so let's go and do that okay data types and this is going to be uh, pipe business entity and we're gonna hook that up to its main container record okay and then obviously we have a name text and then we need to hook it up to the subscription and the org as we've done with every other one Okay, so let's have a look at this one then. And then we've got the type, which links to a an option set. And then we've got contact first name, last name, phone and email. So I'll just whiz through these. Okay, and then we've got the main phone and main web, which is to do with more about the information that's on the business entity rather than the contact. So we've got main phone, main web. Okay, so all we've got to do then is to a privacy rule on there so it's privacy on our pipe define a new rule we'll then call that the SAS rule okay and remember to untick all these positions for everyone else we can say this business entities subscription is current users subscription and this business entities org is current users current org okay again we could have just copied that from the other one and put it on there and that's as far as we need to go with that so we've got all of our data types from our schema obviously this is not all of the types that we're going to have in our application i just didn't want to go for ages drawing out all of our 
all of our tables all up front boring you to death and then implementing them all at once let's do it in stages and we'll explain things as we go through by the way i've noticed let's do that now is we haven't got an address for uh, for our business entity so let's add one in there and obviously this is just the main address because you can have multiple addresses and that is going to be a text as well okay and that's going to be based upon again we haven't got one there have we on there so we probably need to do that is to actually have a main address field so let's pop that in there again i'm doing this all on the schema before we do anything else so let's call that main address or primary address okay and that's going to be of type address <clears throat> so we've got our primary address field and then obviously in here we've got our address which is basically just that information taken from there so let's add that into our schema on our main business entity let's call this primary address which is a type address and on our list type we will have an address field so that it can be displayed very easily in a list as we've covered extensively before so what we need to do next is to show you how we can get the data that we've got in our main container types and how we can populate our list type because that's going to be key we've got to have our information that gets stored in our container types which as i say is our one source of truth this is where the main information lives so that information has got to find its way into here otherwise the two are going to be out of sync and as I've explained before, we're going to use database triggers or some people call them backend triggers. OK, now, when I explain this, I can explain it and show you it. And you can certainly follow along and implement it. But to actually run the, the database triggers to test them, you do need to be on a paid plan with Bubble. OK, so you can be on the personal plan, which is sort of 29 bucks a month if you pay monthly. Or you can do the trial as well. Uh, usually these days bubble home page with your apps on there we'll usually have this link at the top okay we try free upgrade for two weeks okay so maybe give that a go to try out your back-end workflows uh, your back-end uh, triggers and that will enable you to test this out okay so principally how it's going to work is that whenever a record is added or updated for a business entity that you have a back-end trigger that picks up that that has happened and then will run a workflow that you, that you then need to define to duplicate that information okay we'll go through that in the next one and i'm sure that you'll find it useful again we're not building out the app in terms of the front end or real functionality i just want to get these these things done conceptually first so that, so that when we actually start building things out you'll know exactly what i'm doing so We'll close it off there. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Thanks for sticking with me, by the way. Much appreciated. Take care. Bye now.